works. Uh, uh, we're going to take you around the shop and show you just some fun stuff. And, and today what I really want to talk about is what I would call a uh, logical restoration. Um, when you take a car that's a reasonably nice car, but it has you know, problems, you should do a logical restoration rather than a full restoration. And everybody wants to jump right off to, let's do everything on the car. And not only is that prohibitively expensive, but uh, it doesn't really make sense. Um, you don't necessarily want to pick a car apart. So right here, we've got a 67 Corvette. Now, um, Colin, you've done some of the stuff on this car. You took over, but what was done with this car before you got it? What was wrong with it? You remember? Um, it had a blown head gasket, didn't it? Well, we had a, we had a bad motor. Or bad motor. <laughs> so the, the motor was bad. Um, it, it needed a full rebuild, and we, we did that. Yep. What about the fuel system? You remember that? Uh, I think it was all completely junk too, right? Yeah, the, the, the carburetor, yeah. it was the wrong Dirtied carburetor. And... Uh, it had bad gas in it. So it, it just hadn't been used in a long time. What about the wiring? Uh, wiring was original, it was in yeah. rough so, shape. So it had 60 year old wiring. So, so basically, rather than doing everything, we did what I would consider all those points that made sense, right? Yeah, so absolutely. how does it run now? Great. Yeah, so yeah. the car runs great, it stops great, it, it turns great. Um, it basically is a good car, but now cosmetically, what did this top look like a couple of weeks ago? Uh, the window was completely busted out of it. It was, the whole frame was rusted. I mean, you know, it just didn't look good. Right. So, so this top was in rough shape. So, so what we did was we decided to, let's take all those things that are really sort of the long poles in the tent, right? Not every pole in the tent needs to be addressed. So on the interior, if you wouldn't mind, Ashley, sort of point down in the interior and, and take a look. Now, um, what were the condition of the carpets? They were bad, they the, were really bad. The carpets looked like they had been just sun faded and filthy. They were falling from apart. 50 I or mean... 60 years use. But take a look at the seats here. Let me, let me pull this across. What do you think of the look of the seats? They're not perfect, but are the seats bad? No. So, so folks, replacing carpet is a whole lot less than a full restoration of seats. And in this case, the seats were pretty good. The carpet was horrible. Do the carpets, and we've done some cleaning up. Now, all the gauges now work, right? Yep. yep. So, so the gauges that weren't working, we got them working. It even has working AC. That, oh, they're, they're, well, we, we don't want to, so we, we don't want to <laughs> let the owner know that. Um, he, so we, we told him that we probably wouldn't get the AC running and, and oh, there's a long man. story there. Yes, yeah, so you didn't, didn't help me out on that one. Sorry. But it turns out that with relatively little work, we did get the AC working. Now, yeah. we did replace the evaporator, yeah, which I was- mean, Chris went through quite a bit, you know, yeah. to, to make it but work. But when did he do it? What do you mean? Why did why did he do the oh, evaporator on the 67? He did it because the engine was out. The engine was out. <laughs> yeah. And when the engine's out of a 67 Corvette, you can actually get to things. And do you know what the first step in replacing the evaporator on a 67 Corvette is? I'm assuming it's remove the engine. Remove the engine. <laughs> so we already had the engine out, so suddenly things are a lot more accessible. Yeah. And there is a logical way to build a car in an illogical way. And with a lot of the stuff out of the way, it became logical. So we in fact have the factory air on this car working. Um, well, I, let me tell you a quick story. When we started with this car and, and Ashley, take a look down here and we've been doing some work, but you notice this car's got measles everywhere. And in fact, look at the reflection in the paint. Well, look down here, try and, try and see my reflection. Like, can you see my face? I can see your camera, but just barely. Yeah, just barely. Okay, so folks, we're gonna, we're going to deal with a lot of things on this car, including the paint. Like, like, I'll just show you something that to me stands out. Take a look at this rear bumper. Can you see how rough the rear bumper looks? Mm -hmm. Okay, so not only is it, has it got rust coming out from underneath the chrome, but the, the waviness of this bumper is, is almost unbelievable, right? It, the, this bumper looks like it was just... I don't know, it was in part of a demolition derby for a few years yeah, and then they threw up. it on a Corvette. <laughs> so, so to me, you've got three fairly nice bumpers and for whatever reason, one, one that's just really, really horrible bumper. And, and so here's the problem. You don't want to go put one like number really 10 bumper nice, yeah. on it <laughs> because then the other three will look bad. So what I'm going to try and do is find him one bumper, all these yellow pieces of tape, 
represent marks in the paint that we're going to deal with. You can see how dull the paint is. We're going to polish it. The interior, when we get done cleaning the seats and replacing the carpets and stuff, what, do you, what, what number would you assign the interior cosmetically? Do you, what's your vision? I'd say probably eight and a half. I, I'd number. give it eight, right, exactly. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. That's a, that's a good number. And folks, an eight and a half is a very attractive car. Yeah. So, so instead of spending $200,000 to do Everything. a frame off yeah. on this car, we're gonna spend about a quarter of that. And yet, if you compare this car when we're done to a $200,000 build, what do you think? I mean, it won't look quite as nice. But it's not gonna be crazy far off. I from, mean, it's, from 50 feet, do you think you'll tell the difference? No. I from 30 feet? Maybe a little. Maybe. <laughs> and, and that's the whole point. So, But driving look, down the road, it's just it's going to look road. just as nice of a car. And a 67 Corvette so gorgeous. I mean, it's, yeah, it's it, already. It, I would argue that it already won, right? Exactly. So, so it would be like if Heidi Klum has a booger on her cheek, she's still Heidi Klum. Just got to flick the booger off, right? So, <laughs> um, so basically, I think what we're doing with this car is a logical build and in the case of a 67 Corvette, you could justify spending the kind of money yeah. to do a $200,000. I saw one go across the auction block yesterday, an original non-perfect car, $350,000. Folks, it was a small block car, $350,000. So the price of them has gone nuts and, and you could justify $200,000. Yeah, nah, yeah. But would you be afraid to drive a two or $300,000 car? Yep. Are you gonna be afraid to drive this car? No, I think you could take this out every weekend and have fun. See, that's just it. And if you get a little nick in the paint- It's not the end of the world. You're not gonna go cry for a week yep. over the nick in the paint. You're gonna, you're gonna follow our procedures. You're gonna touch it up like the other 50 touch-ups. Yep. And you're gonna have a nice car again. Yep. That's why in many cases, the $50,000 build makes a lot more sense than the two hundred dollars or $300,000 build. Now, yeah. let's go look at a car. Um, actually, wait there. Uh, Davey, can you come up here for a sec since we're already up here? Yeah. So here's a car that, all right, let's, let's do some math. Jump, jump in here and join me. Davey, what's this car going to be worth the day we finish it when we put all the money into it? If I had to guess, ten, fifteen thousand. 15000 yeah, you, I, I would go probably a little higher than that, but this is going to be a $20,000 car. And the reason it's going to be, and, and I'll even go with Dave's number, a, a, a ten dollars to $20,000 car. Why is it going to be a ten dollars to $20,000 car? It's not desirable. It's a 1979 MPV. Yeah, well, yeah. 79. If it were a 62, which is, I know people say 64 is the first year it wasn't. They're actually producing 62. So if it was a 62, it might be a fairly, um, a far more valuable, a $50,000 car. But as a 79, it's gonna be a $20,000 car. Yeah. Does it make sense to put 50 grand into a $20,000 car? No. Wait a second. Well, it all depends. There we go. Why, do, what does it depend on? Sentimental value. If you love the car. Yeah, you gotta love and, it. And, and in this case, who owns the car and does he love it? Doc, and he loves this thing. Okay. He had it since he was a kid. Why does the Doc love this car? Do you remember the memories? Him? But what specific? There's one particular memory that he says this is the car. I knew you were going to quiz me on something. I, okay, I got him. The doc <laughs> said this was the car that got him through med school. And 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 folks, med school is a grueling time in someone's life. So yeah. it was his friend in med school. So he's not giving the car up. And and for what it's worth, his daughter doesn't really love the car. Most people look at it and go, "It's a 79 MGB. Who cares?" But so we're we're doing some work, and we're yeah. going to spend similar amounts of money that we are on the 67 Corvette, right? Okay. And yet in the end, the Corvette's going to be worth 150 and this car is still going to be worth 20. Right. But it takes similar money to build them, right? Yep. So explain what you're doing here. Cause, cause if you can see this, we got fresh metal here, here, and here. What so, are we doing? All right. So being this is 79, it had the big old rubber crash bumpers on the five mile an hour bumpers or whatever, but we're going to put the older style bumpers on it. So in order to do that with a 79, to put a pre-73 bumper kit on it, right. you gotta do modifications to the bump. So why would you put a pre-73 bumper kit, a chrome bumper on a 79 MGB? Because it looks good. Well, okay, I'm gonna go one <laughs> step farther. Okay. So it's no longer a birth control vehicle. That's why, you, because okay. you don't want a BCV. Right. You, you want a, a cool car. And let me tell you, you take a 79 MG, you put the right wheels on it, yeah. you give it the you right dress posture, it yeah. and you put the chrome bumpers on it and polish it up. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the look of that car? Oh, 
it, it, yeah, it, it changes it, yeah, right? It's a whole 180 from what it, it was it, until what it is. It goes yeah. from kind of an ugly car. Mm -hmm. Now, when this car came in, it didn't really, it, it had to be hauled in here, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. What, what all have we done to the car? Can um, you, yeah, I can give you a general. We we did motor work. It's got a new carburetor on it. The head's been sent out and re refurbished. Uh, we've rewired it. Uh, Colin's working on the interior on this car. So we, uh, quite a bit. The whole brake system's gone through. The whole fuel system has gone through. Um, pretty much just we've touched about every system on this car. So would you do you like the procedures we use around here? We started with what chunk of work? Uh, mechanical and safety. Mechanical and, yeah. and exactly safety. Yeah. So brake steering, suspension, motor, fuel system, yep. electrical, that's all done. Mm -hmm. Now what are we doing? We're making it pretty. We're, making, we're doing the cosmetics. Okay. And, and, and so it's a logical way to do it. And unfortunately, yeah. what do most people do when they work on a car? They want the cosmetics done first. They, they start with their yeah. cosmetics. They got a turn. They want it to look good, but then you can't drive it around. Yeah, you got a pretty thing that sits there. Yeah. So we always build a car the opposite of the way everybody wants it. So, yeah. so what I love about this car is when we get done, and yeah, you know, folks, there's still some dirt here. Yeah. We're going to clean this car up. We're going to polish the paint. And, and what Davey's done here is he's taken what was, in my opinion, the single ugliest part of the car, yeah. gotten rid of it, and by the time we put the original style chrome bumpers on this, yeah. what do you think of the that alone? Yeah, it's, it's gonna make it look like a totally different car. So, a little bit of work. How many yeah. hours do you have in just the metal work up uh, front? On the front, I have about, well, Colin did a lot of the prep work, but as far as me putting it in and, and shaping it up, I've got about six to seven hours in the front right now. Okay, so by the time we get this, Colin did the disassembly and prep. Mm -hmm. You do the metal work. Yep. And then Steve and Will will do the body, the work, body work and paint. We'll probably have 30 hours or yeah, so. Yeah, 25, in front 30 hours in, in just doing this front conversion yeah. here. And, and so, you know, that's not super cheap. No. But is that money well spent cosmetically? I think so. I, I think it's yeah, great money. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, from, from the doc's perspective, yeah. it's probably a third of a set of braces. <laughs> and for that, he's going to get a front of a, a car really nice that, car. that yes. looks amazing. And mm -hmm. what about the new grill going in it? Oh, Isn't that sexy? Yeah. yeah okay, it's folks, nice. it's just sexy. Let's it's walk around nice. the back yeah. and take a look at um, the rest of the story. Yep. So with the back, we've had to... Um, we've had to add these pieces. Now, the kit that we get comes with these, but they do not fit. Nothing ever fits. <laughs> yeah. So we've had to work it, you know, work the pieces, fit the tail light, make sure it matches with the bumper, get it welded in, get it shaped up, to get it ready for the... Let me explain why. Because originally, see, in 1962 through 1973, this little piece was formed here. It comes down off the tail light. It forms to the bumper. It looks beautiful. But in 1973, when they came out with the birth control bumpers, they chopped all this off to put a great big chunk of ugly rubber here that goes bad on you very quickly. So really the rubber was already decayed to the point where it didn't function. So Dave, you have to weld all these. Now what yep. still has to be done once they're welded? Uh, well, well, it's gotta be body worked. Yeah, so, you know. so, so although Dave's done a beautiful job and it's pretty nice, it isn't perfect like I can feel right yeah. here. Hey, folks, you can't put your finger on it, but it, there's a little bit of a ripple right there. So mm -hmm. that's going to be body worked. And when this is painted, will it ever look like that was added? You'll never know. And and what do you think of the look of this bumper? Where is that ugly rubber thing? <laughs> You'd have to ask Colin. Hey, Colin, where is that ugly rubber bumper? The rear one. Over where? Can you grab it? Could you? Would you mind bringing it up here? So so folks, logical build now. So, so let's just talk, even if you had a lot of money, Dave, let's just say you were independently wealthy and you could go buy a yacht today. Would it still make spend, sense to spend two hundred or $300,000 doing a ground up restoration, a, a beautiful concourse build of an MGB? No, I, I, I not in my opinion. Right, I, I couldn't do that. Even if I was worth a, a billion dollars, I would still have a hard time because it doesn't make sense. Right. But could you spend 50 grand on this car if it was your dream car and it got you through oh, medical yeah. school oh, definitely. to make it sexy? All right, so <laughs> try, try to pick it up. Oh, oh, I know, this thing is stupid. I'm gonna let you pick it up. You, pick, you can pick that one up with two fingers. Yeah. So, so this, so this is, oh, and, it, and by the way, it, it comes, you know, leaves are included <laughs> at no extra price. So, so, so the reason it was missing all that metal is because- Here, we'll stick it up there. Yeah. You can get an so, idea what we're talking about here. You can see that so, part came all the way up. So, 
So chrome was out and ugly black rubber was in, in the mid 70s on an MGB. And, and look, I understand why they did it. The doc didn't want it. He said, I want it to be the car that I always wanted it to be. So he still gets his 79 MG, but now it's gonna look like it was a classic yeah. British roadster from the days of the 60s. And, yeah. and so do you, do you agree with the style of build we're doing on oh, this? Oh, of course. Yeah, definitely. See, folks, don't automatically say, let's do everything. Because does this car need everything? No. Is there a reason that that taillight or the, the backup light socket had to be replaced? No. If it doesn't need it, no. don't do it. And, and, and in fact, what do you think about the quality of the original parts versus replacement parts as a rule? Oh, the original, always go with the original. Folks, leave as many original parts on your car as you can. Do what you need to. When we get done with this, and you can see the paint doesn't look great. There's some scratches in it. There's some chips. It's not real shiny. When we get done, this paint, we're going to do a cosmetic, basically a, a paint makeover on this car. And so I would call this sort of a driver's restoration. It's a quarter of the cost, gets you 80% of the end product yeah. in, in a quarter of the time. So to me, it goes from being silly to being logical. Yeah. So that's cool. it, folks. Um, stay with us. Please remember to do those things like like, subscribe, and, and, and share these videos. Um, there is a logical way to do a build, and we're moving more to logical um, in this day. The economic times are a little bit, little bit off, and so we're, we're trying to work with people that make sense in the economy that we're facing in such an uncertain world. So thanks, folks, and we'll see you next Friday.